Hello, my name is Anya, and today we are going to add like functionality to our Flutterflow app. So right now I have authentication set up, which means that I have a user data type and I am currently logged in. So when we test, everything will be referencing my current user data type. I also went ahead and added a fruit as a data type with a name as a string field. And you can see that I have some fruits in the database right now. Now we want to have some functionality to be able to like a fruit and then also to remove our likes on that fruit. But if you think about it, if multiple people are using the same application, they see the same set of fruits and they can like those fruits just like we can. So one way to do that would be to have a fruits field on here which is your liked fruits and when you like one we just add it to this group but the problem is you can imagine if you were to scale this up and like thousands of fruits this would become a very long list to have within a user data type so a better way to do that is to have a field likes on a fruit which is just a document reference to users and it's a list of users so when you like it you add them to this list of users on the fruit data type. And that's what you can reference. You can count up this list, and this is a much more scalable way to do this. Now that we have that created, let's set up a list view to just display all of our fruits. So I'm going to add a card into that, as well as a text field, which is just going to say the fruit's name going to add a little bit of padding on all those sides just so that it's a little more aesthetically pleasing and now I'm realizing that I also need to wrap this widget in a row which enables us to add the toggle icon which is going to be that heart icon that you see. So let's make it when this value is true and we'll set the value in a second, it's going to be this full heart. And we can just make it red. And when the value is not true, we can also make it red and change the icon to this heart outline. I'm just going to add in the row alignment here so that it looks a little better. Now let's dynamically populate this list view with all of the fruits that I set up in the database. We are going to do that through a backend query and a query collection in which we will just collect all of the fruits. You can order it and filter it, but right now I'm just getting all of them. And this will duplicate the Thing that we set up. Now, right now it's just saying hello world, which is not what we want. We want this fruit document, which is a result of this query that we did on the list view. We want to show that fruit's name, which is what we have here. And you can see that all of these changed as well. Now that we have grabbed the fruit document, we can change the toggle value. So essentially, we are checking if the fruit document likes contains item authenticated user, which is the current user, and we just want to grab their reference because likes is a list of references. Basically, the way the toggle icon works is when you click on it, it automatically changes this value. So there's no need for any actions on it because it's automatically doing that. Now we can go ahead and test this out. Here we can see all of the fruits were populated and we can click on it to like it and we can like a couple and then we can also remove our like. Just one last thing, a very common functionality, think of Instagram for example, is to show the number of likes on a certain object. So I'm just going to show you how to do that given our current database structure. I'm just adding a text field under this toggle icon. I wrap them both 
in a column. And the value of this text field is going to be the fruit document likes, which is the list of users that have liked it. And then we are just going to count up the number of items. Now I can preview this. That currently there are no likes. And when we go ahead and like it, we see that value change. Thank you. I hope this was helpful. And let me know in the comments down below if you want me to make a video on how to create a login slash sign up flow.